Hey guys, it's Norm from Tesla here at the RPF party. That's the Replica Prop Forum's annual gathering of miniatures, fa makers, fabricators, costume makers, and this is Jonathan Faber, who we met last year. Now, Jonathan, you make studio scale replicas, of, studio scale replicas of ships from Star Wars. Yes. And your specialty is, or your focus, is building the ship with the exact same greeblings right. as were on the ship. So. For example, this Thai bomber here, we saw this last year and you were talking about taking parts off that you already had put on because the forums had discovered the original source kit parts. Right, yeah, there were some parts that uh, they weren't known at the time and then someone had discovered the correct parts because the whole thing is just built from model kit parts, you know, you sort of blew them on in the correct place and the right placement and uh, so since then I had put the correct parts on and paint it in the correct color. And it's finished now, so to give people a sense of just how complicated some of these models can be, like you can scratch build the Greenblades. You can take photo and then say, okay, I can either you build it with styrene or 3D print apart. Right. But if you're looking for castings or original miniatures, how many different model kits are you sourcing from? It depends on the, on the model you're building, but this one is probably about 20 different model kits that you're pulling parts from. Are they all different types of vehicles? Yeah, like this is World War II airplanes, World War II tanks, ship models. Um, uh, this is uh, from the Saturn V, for the Apollo missions. And some of the kits, you're only using one, you buy the whole kit for one little part. Those ILM model makers, they made, uh, it, they made it difficult for you, right? 30 years later. I think they almost knew. <laughs> Well, last year you also embarked on a new project that's now completed, and this is beautiful. Thank it's you. the same scale model as the bomber, but it's a complete cutaway. It is. So it, this one, uh, the interior was conceived from scratch from you. Yeah, I uh, uh, a little bit of it I looked at one of the cutaway books, but I sort of just wanted to make it up on my own. And uh, so I just sort of thought to myself, okay, what would be inside? What would it look like? What's the purpose? How would it function? And so the whole interior, I just I just made up and, and built from different kit parts or just raw plastic or. Can you point out some of those details? Yeah, like the the engine. Uh, I I just I laser cut a few different discs and then I turn the cone on a lathe. Um, the bomb rack, the the rack itself I turned out of. PVC tube on the lathe, and then the bombs themselves are these little pieces from the uh, uh, kit called the Carl Mor Morser, mm. um, and ILM called it Universal Gravely, and they put it on everything, so I thought I'd put it in this, and it's two of those with an aluminum tube glued together and just made a bunch of them. You have interiors, you have paneling, I love even on the outside here, it's as if you took the whole piece off, and yeah. you have the interior, you have the wiring, and even, even hatches built into it. Yeah, um, I built, so I wanted to build sort of the structure of how the thing might be built, but also I wanted to take the skin off so you could see under the skin and see how all the workings were. Architecturally, did you look at, for example, how uh, submarines were built and how ships were built I actually looked for at, that structure? I looked at a lot of aircraft, aircraft uh, cutaways of actual aircraft and, and aircraft that had the panels removed and they're working on it and sort of it went off of that mostly. And then in terms of the finishing, the painting, I see that you have the red for all the cutaway. Is that kind of um, calling back to those cutaway books? Yeah, it's the books, and I, I, uh, I've been to a lot of you know, military museums and a lot of like tanks. When they cut them open, they have they paint the edge red yep. so you can see what's cut away. Yeah. So that was my thinking with that. Um, and this one, uh, since this one is a sort of exact copy of the studio scale. This one I wanted to weather it more, so I have more fun weathering it. So this is a lot more weathered than that one is. Right, and you see in museums, a military museum, sometimes they take the original aircraft and they actually, or tanks, they cut into them. Right. So it's as if there was a real TIE bomber that was decommissioned and then put in the museum was, on display. That was exactly my thinking was that it's sort of, you know, the, the, the rebels have won the war and this is now in a war museum, what yep. do you see? And that's, that's the way I went about wow. it. In building out the interiors, did you also pull from those same model kits that would have been in the ILM, uh, the model shop? I, I did. A, lo a lot of them, like, some of the interior of the, of the cockpit is from the Darth Vader TIE fighter kit. Mm. And, uh, yeah, some of the, like, some of the, the oxygen tanks are from one of those kits. So I sort of, I pulled a lot from the same, same kits that they would have at that time. 
Wow, it looks wonderful. And then, since this is done now, it looks like you're embarking on a new project. So, I am. another TIE Fighter? This is, uh, yeah, this is a studio scale TIE Fighter, the very early stages of a TIE Fighter. Um, I have collected about 95% of the kit parts. And uh, so this is my next project to start on this. And then again, in sourcing those pieces, those Greeblies, that IL model makers use, how many different model kits did you have to pull from? This is about 30 or 40. Wow. Is a, all, I don't have any detail on it now, but all the detail on the, on the wing star, what they call the wing star, there's a ton of little tiny kit parts all over that thing. Are you finding those actual kits on eBay and then buying them and then taking out those one or two little Greeblies to put in your model? Yeah, I find them on eBay. I go to kit, model kit sales. Uh, sort of anywhere I can, talk to friends who have some of the kits, they loan me parts that I can mold. Um, but yeah, that's where I get most of them. And then when it's done, you know this has a direct tie. It's exactly how it would have been built as, all those years ago. As close as I can get. As close as you can get. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan, for sharing thank with you. us this model. All these builds are on the RPF. We'll have links below. And uh, we'll see you next year when hopefully this is more built out. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you.